We're looking at Luke chapter 5 from verse 33 through to 39 and I'm using the ESV. And they said to him, The disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink. And Jesus said to them, Can you make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. He also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. If he does, he will tear the new, and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins, and no one after drinking old wine desires new, for he says, the old is good. We know in scripture that water can represent a type of the word, particularly the Old Testament, and wine representing the blood of the New Testament. If we have a look at Ephesians 5.26, we see an example of this, where it says in verse 26, Ephesians 5, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. And we know that wine, as I've said, represents the blood of Jesus and therefore the new covenant, the New Testament. And if we look at Luke twenty two twenty, Jesus says, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. So the cup of wine represents the new covenant in his blood, the New Testament. So we have the water of the scriptures of the Old Testament, the law, and we have the blood of the New Testament, the new covenant in Christ. It isn't until the water of the law becomes fulfilled in the wine of the blood of Jesus Christ that it has redemptive value. Jesus was the word made flesh, as we see in John 1, 1. He was also the sacrificial lamb of God. He came as the word and died as the lamb. The word became blood, i.e. the water became wine. This is illustrated in the turning of the water to wine in the wedding at Cana, in John 2.9. At the wedding in Cana, Jesus ties the wedding wine event to the shedding of his precious blood on the cross when he says, My hour has not yet come, in John 2.4, showing it is by the cross that the water was changed to blood. And we see a picture of water and blood at the crucifixion in John 19.34 when blood and water were poured out of his side. This relationship is explicitly linked in 1 John 5.6 where John writes, This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only but by the water and the blood. The wineskins are those things that contain the wine contain the water. They had become hard and brittle, consisting of the traditions of men. See Mark 7, 8. They will not hold the new wine that comes forth from Christ, hence they reject him. Their interpretation of the Old Testament is rigid. These are the old wineskins. They will not hold the new wine. Carnal man always seeks to institutionalise the work of God into skins of their own making, which kills the spirit. See 1 Thessalonians 5.19 and Genesis 26.15. It still goes on today. So God is making all things new. New wineskins for the new blood of Christ, which never grows old. <laughs>